Good morning, Allison. You look lovely today. Um, thank you, Tom. I think. Did you hear that they killed the maniac Gaddafi? Yes, I did. It is a sad day for Libya. What? A sad day for Libya? That's insane. It is a great day for Libya. That evil tyrant killed thousands of his own citizens, and President Barack Obama did the right thing. Oh really? You think that bombing innocent civilians is a good thing? Bombing for peace. Killing people because Gaddafi supposedly killed his own citizens? That doesn't make any logical sense. That's right. It is for humanitarian purposes so it is perfectly acceptable. He was a dictator that put his own people in poverty. Poverty? Oh no Tom. Our nation has an 11 trillion dollar debt, plus another 50 trillion in entitlements. The African country of Libya had zero debt because they didn't borrow money from the World Bank, the IMF or any other bank. They had their own system of banking and they certainly weren't poor. Oh wow. I did not know that. Are you sure? 11 trillion dollars. Where did that come from? It comes from the interest that the Federal Reserve charges to print money based upon nothing. Right out of thin air. Wait, the Federal Reserve charges us interest for our money? Yes. It is called usury. Well, as a good Christian, I must say we all have to pay taxes. Yes but only on bond measures that are voted on locally for roads and schools and the post office, for example. Income taxes to pay off our loans from the Federal Reserve. And even your Jesus whipped the money changers out of the temple because they were charging an exchange rate from dinars to shekels. Oh yes. They were stealing from the people, and God. You sure do know a lot about taxes. But I still don't understand about Libya. I thought they were bad, and we are good them. Bad. Us. Good. That is a simplistic way of looking at things, but if one digs a little more, they can find the truth, and the truth will make you free. Oh. Jesus said that too. What debt did Libya have? The media says that Gaddafi was evil, and that he destroyed their economy. Why would the media lie? Tom, the media lies all the time. Libya had zero debt, like I said before and gas was 13 cents a gallon. 13 cents a gallon? You're kidding me. Yes, and they had free education for all, even through college. Free medical and dental, and everyone was provided with their own home. If they wanted a car, the government gave them half of the money. Libya was perfectly fine until Obama bombed them for humanitarian purposes. Now listen, America's true reason for intervention and missile attacks against Libya has become very clear with the sudden creation by the rebels of a new central bank on March 29, 2011. The rebels in Libya are in the middle of a life or death civil war and Muammar Gaddafi is still in power and yet somehow the Libyan rebels have had enough time to establish a new central bank of Libya and form a new national oil company. Perhaps when this conflict is over those rebels can become time management consultants. They sure do get a lot done. What a skilled bunch of rebels. They can fight a war during the day and draw up a new central bank and a new national oil company at night without any outside help whatsoever. Oh wow. Those rebels are talented. If only the rest of us were so versatile. But isn't forming a central bank something that could be done after the civil war is over? According to Bloomberg, the Transitional National Council has designated the Central Bank of Benghazi as a monetary authority competent in monetary policies in Libya and the appointment of a governor to the Central Bank of Libya, with a temporary headquarters in Benghazi. Setting up a central bank by day, and by night fighting for justice and peace. Amazing. Yes, isn't it? They were also making their own money from gold, called the dinar. It would replace the dollar and the rebels couldn't have that. Libya has been one of the last nations in the world that had its own state-run banking system and control over its own money supply. By having this system in place, they could demand oil purchases from their oil fields to be made in Libyan dinar and not the US dollar. It also means that Libya has ensured themselves a stable economy with little inflation and currency devaluing as most of the industrialized world has under private central banks. 
So you were saying that they stole Libya's money? The media didn't say anything about that. Tom, the media is controlled by corporations like GE who own them. Even NPR is sponsored by Monsanto's. These U.S. corporations that make and sell weapons of mass destruction did the same to Iraq. Iraq started to sell its oil for euros and not dollars. The parallels for both European and U.S. intervention now in Libya is very reminiscent to why the United States attacked Iraq in 2003, six months before the U.S. moved into Iraq to take down Saddam Hussein. The oil nation had made the move to accept euros instead of dollars for oil, and this became a threat to the global dominance of the dollar as the reserve currency, and its dominion as the petrodollar. Weapons of mass destruction? The media said that Iraq had a nuclear program, and they found many many weapons of mass destruction. The media is wrong. They found no weapons of mass destruction at all. They were after the money and oil. The American people were given the lie that there were weapons of mass destruction and that there were Al-Qaeda training bases in the Arab state, both of which were proven to be false. No, these were false flags given by the government to try to justify a punishment on Iraq for moving away from dollars as payment for oil. That just can't be true. I don't believe it. Iraq did 9-11. Why would the media say that if it weren't true? The government said that it was 19 Saudi Arabians not Iraqis. Even George Bush Jr. said that Iraq had nothing to do with 9-11. Now they are using the same blueprint for Libya. To be able to create a new central bank under the blueprint that is used by Western powers in less than two weeks by the rebels gives vast credence that the rebellion itself in Libya was initiated by outside forces and not over demands by the citizens of Libya for social reform. This plan was put in place by the world's game changers who want complete global control over oil and economic systems. This is unbelievable. You are freaking me out, Allison. I don't understand. I though. But you say? It is all so overwhelming. I felt the same way when I learned the truth, Tom. It did not take long before we discovered the real reason why America chose to intervene and attack Libya and not any of the other nations in the Middle East that are going through internal rebellion. The rebels' creation of a central bank, coupled with the United Nations report two days ago that there would be no sanctions on the selling of oil by the rebels who control certain fields and refineries, proves that this war is not about human rights, but about punishment for a nation that refused to give up its sovereignty to the global banking and oil cabals. Those sons of bitches. This just makes me so damn angry me too. Now with Libya gone, that only leaves three countries, North Korea, Cuba, and Iran, that control their own sovereign nation's economy. Iran. Those evildoers. They want to destroy America and Israel. Oh brother. Here we go again.